Yes, it's only Margaery oh, fault. Oh, well, is it the biggest you've had on? Up there. What, what are we talking probably. about? <laughs> probably. By the way, I need to say, Mercedes hat. Mm -hmm. You've just bought you just bought your Mercedes. Oh, it's, the first, it's my first motor I got. I passed my test and uh, my dad got his at a merch. <laughs> buzzing, absolutely buzzing. But you know what's funny actually? I played with Mark's boy Tom at Motherwell. Yes. And I used to always say to Tom, you need to let me meet your dad. Do you know what I mean? Let me meet him. Never had the chance on mm -hmm. it. What a day it is for myself as well, Simon, as well as you. And, uh, I was also on trial with Tom as well. Tom, Tom came on trial at Portsmouth uh -huh. for a couple of weeks a week. Yes, he Bent did. Had a few coffees. Lovely boy. Did. Testing it did. Himself. Yeah, too nice sometimes. He needs to get a bit more steel in him and I've always told him that, you know. I always send him a picture of a gorilla before the game. Oh, do right? you? Yeah, yeah. Every game or just? Every game. Do you mean? Yeah, yeah. What is it your dad sends you before games? Make it hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, where is Tom now? Sorry, just is he over on the... Is it Piast? He right. was in Cyprus, AEK Alanica last year. Um, um, didn't go too well for him. Well, he played yeah, most of the time, three or four different managers in one season. Um, it just shows you that this wasn't a sta stable environment for, for him anyway, especially coming off the back of uh, winning a championship in Poland. So that was, that was a big disappointment. But I think, you know, it just, when you, when, you, when you, you know, see of winning a championship and then you have a go to a club with major disappointment, it, re, it re, reboots you, yeah. you know, and it makes you refocus. Um, I think that's what it's done. Um, I think Tom's glad to be back um, playing at his old club. Um, s s few of the old people, uh, players still there, still the same coach, same, okay. same, all the same backroom staff. So they all know Tom. Um, so he's, you know, he's gone straight into there. They had a great win against his first game against Legia Warsaw. They beat them four one. Wow, what, what is that? Like? So he's, yeah, he's well, sort of not had a pre season, but he's up and running. Let's Over on that, that Cyprus, well, I'd love to see Tom Haley in a pair of trunks. Oh, good, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah, good looking yeah, boy. Yeah. Well, what kind of football dad are you? So do you, do you watch every game and then do you critique, critique uh, him after? Uh, no, I never cr critique him. Um, he's his own critique. He is his biggest. Track, is he? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. He knows, he knows when he plays well, he knows when he plays badly. I don't have to tell him. I watch him. I watch him most games. It was hard to get the Cyprus football on. But uh, Polish football, uh, you watch it on a, on lots of apps. So yeah, good to watch it, watch that. But uh, you know, he always comes back to me. I just say what you think, you know. Um, and he say blah blah blah. Boom. And my numbers are good, or whatever. It's all about numbers now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but my numbers are good. I said, forget the numbers. How, how do you think you play? You know. And he said, yeah, I thought I played well today. So, do you ever yeah. fling in a wee Maldini? Would not have done that. No, oh, you should, uh, I don't. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but, I yeah. that. It's, it's, it's encouragement. It's not just trying to destroy a player. Nobody's yeah. like my old pal, though, anyway. <laughs> was he? Uh, we'll come to him in a minute. Your, your, dad, your dad obviously played, so was he the biggest influence on you yeah. when you were a kid? Well, Tony, wasn't it? Well, 100%. My dad was a big player. Um, first £100,000 signing. Was he? Uh, yeah, he wow. was the first £100,000 signing. If you and couldn't hear the household. The story behind that is he was at Villa um, knocking the goals in. Um, playing very, very well. Bill Shankly approached um, Villa and were taking him for 100,000 up to Liverpool. In that summer, uh, Peter Osgood broke his ankle. Um, so Tommy Dock phoned um, Shanks up and said to him, he said, can we, can we take the big man for a year? Um, and then we'll sell him to you for 95,000 at the end of one year. So that agreement was made. So my dad went from, from Villa to Chelsea for one year. Um, scored, the, scored in the semi-final, played in the FA Cup final against Tottenham, scored the winner against uh, Leeds in the semi-final, and then after that, shot up to, to Liverpool. So, you know, that's, 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 that's how it all worked out. You see, that was the, the Scottish connection still right. working down in England. So how was he with you as a kid? Would he um, be the yeah. that you had at all? Oh, my dad was the worst probably footballing father to come and watch her and be a massive voice. And, and it was always made his voice heard and he would be at the side of the pitch and, and I think it's some some kids can take it some kids can't you know um, he obviously could to uh, sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't sort of stuff it was just he had it, yeah he saw the saw the game played the game and it was it was, it was a massive shadow for me to get out of let's yeah, put, it, let's that, put yeah. it that way um, but, but maybe you never pushed you like that man no, wouldn't have the that you had yeah listen he, he had me doing all sorts of stuff I was modelling myself on him when I was four or five, doing press-ups, sit-ups, you know, at home at, at that age. Um, and, you know, never bought me a bike um, because he said, he, if you want to be a footballer, you need to run everywhere. So I had to run everywhere wow. to play football with my pals. They all, all had bikes. 
Um, you know, um, I had a bike for literally three months when I was 15, and then only got stolen. <laughs> and that was that was. He's me. got somebody to steal that, don't he? Well, well, I, I don't know. It was in Liverpool, so it could have probably been, <laughs> could probably be stolen. You, did you struggle with that though as a kid? Was it a bit too much at times? Uh, yeah. I, I, listen, I was you, as a kid. You, you want what what, you, what your pals have got. You know, they're, yeah. they're running around on bikes and all that sort of stuff. It's it's, it's fair to say that I could get a bike and so I can keep up with them. But, but uh, listen. Yeah, we had many runs in my dad and myself um, on on his theories and and what have you. But I can say that probably helped me a great deal about the running situation and the the, the physical side of, of being a young man yeah. um, into into my game. Uh, my game was fitness, and and you know I could run all day. So and that was the, that was down to my my youth. Yeah, basically. Dad, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm obsessed with that. With that sort of how dads are with their sons. I mean, obviously yeah. with Frank Lampard said his dad was really hard on, but you yeah. look at the career he's had. You know, like Tiger Woods as well. His yeah. dad is maybe a bit much, but. See if they maybe one that would they have went to the heights of it? Exactly. Driven, they're all they're yeah, all know. driven. Yeah. Listen, every, every, every great's had a dad like that, but yeah. most of them haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, Paolo Maldini is the same. Paolo Maldini, Paolo's dad was the yeah. same same position at him at Milan. Um, that's why that's why we had a real good connection when I joined Milan. Um, he used to Paolo used to come with us um, in a car and learn his English and, on, and all that sort of stuff. And he knew my background. My dad was centre forward. I was a centre forward. He was that. But, so one went and was real, st still really good friends right now. You know, he's doing the same job as me mm -hmm. when I was at, uh, uh, working at Rangers as a business development. Now he's sporting director. He's gone on to that 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 yeah, level. Yeah. But we we we. You know, we we talk a lot through the uh, what's happened. Uh, we said that to him. Two absolutely gorgeous guys yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know? See, it was funny. My dad last night was telling me that, and I don't know if I should. Do, we had a few drinks from that. Was it right that Brian Clough knocked you back? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. know that a bit, <laughs> no, my dad. So I was him, I was doing the interview, and he, yeah. was, he was telling me a few stories. But he's all. My There's dad, a good story. Was, a good story in the book about that. Oh, is there? Uh, coming I, out, he yeah. told you. Yeah. He has a wee snippet. Yeah, he just told Get me he'd never be a footballer. Who Brian Clough did? He did indeed. It was nine o'clock in the morning. He might have been pissed out of his head. So, <laughs> so there you go. So, and, and how, did that, make, oh, how did that make you feel? Did that not give no, confidence? That, no, that made me angry. Um, yeah, and you know, was he Brian Clough? Brian Clough at the time? Oh, they just won a yeah. He just European won a European Cup and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that was all you know, uh, Martin O'Neill and all that crew. Yeah. So yeah, I'd had a good pre-season. Left school, um, scored a couple of goals in bounce games. Always tall, very skinny. And yeah, just not had that, you know, that time we end the pre season when you have to go and knock on the door, and that's where the story will finish. So, read about it. Wow. wow. And then you went to Coventry after that, yeah. So, did yeah. Cough sell you, or was it a free transfer? No, 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 I was still, I was still on a trial, I was still trialist, right? Then. And I went over to, to, to Coventry. Um, Gordon Milne, a good friend of my dad from the Liverpool days, uh, and a mad. Uh, assistant Ronnie Wiley, Ronnie Wiley. How the, wild uh, are we talking? Oh, mad Scotsman. Oh, you know, uh, a wee mad Scotsman. Um, he, uh, yeah, he, had, he waited 10 years to break somebody's leg. Ronnie Wiley did. Yeah, somebody broke his leg and he waited 10 years. And got him back? Got him back. Yeah, I won't tell you who the player was, but no, he was, he was a big player. And what would he be the one that would be yeah, on the other time? Yeah, listen, uh, yeah, yeah. Ronnie was a real a driven. He was, yeah, he was driven. Gordon Milne was the calm guy, and it was a club uh, run. And uh, Joe Mercer was there, great man. Um, and then um, Jimmy Hill became uh, chairman. Very visionary, visionary. Uh, first off, seat stadium, Highfield Road, and all that sort of stuff partnership with American football club Detroit Express all the young players went out there in the summer had a fantastic time learned how to play the game you know played against Beckenbauer and Pelly and all these sort of players so you did yeah yeah and oh my George so you were centre forward Beckenbauer's up your ass yeah they really speak to speak to you they would speak to you as a, as a as a good pro and you know I was listen I was 18 when I went out to to, to play for that summer so I finished just got into the first team at Coventry and then gone out and played through came back in the October when that season finished so back into the football league when when that was up and running again but um, all those sort of players that you play against when you are a young lad if there are anything of of a good sort if you know what I mean they're always talking to you you know don't if you was just to stand just this honestly like that just, well, just stand there, there, it, oh, it, it would make my job a lot harder 
you know. So this is this is that, and that's when I when I they. So is that where you Detroit, really learnt the game? Would you say? Yeah, in Detroit? yeah. Detroit. No, no. Um, I properly learnt the game when I went to Milan. But these sort of players that you play against in when you're six, 16 and 17, you know, um, that's that. If you want, if you want to learn, then you're learning from the very, very best. You know. What, so, you, what were you like when you were a kid? Were you when you went into and trained with sort of first team players or they big names? Were you sort of were you confident that you, uh, that you belonged there? Yeah, uh, yeah, because I was I was always tall. Right. I, see, when I was when I was eleven, twelve, I was like five ten, five eleven. Uh, but like a drink of water, it was like you know, real, real skinny. Um, but I had always had that. I was never never afraid to tackle men, you know, or yeah. being in, in amongst yeah. it sort of stuff. So yeah, it, that that helped me a lot. What my dad would taught me is as an old fashioned centre forward, you know, using your body well. Using your, you know, using your limbs well, should we say? Um, taught me how to head a ball. Um, um, you know, as a as a six, seven year old, I was, I was all sorts of stuff, slide tackling on concrete posts in a garden. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he would get me doing. You and all roof, was yeah, 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 yeah. Just putting a ball, a ball against a, uh, uh, you know, one of the, these slabs that on the floor, and just banging into it, sort of stuff, and perfecting that. And that, honestly. When I was at Coventry, Gordon Milne um, uh, moved on. Dave Sexton came in, and then Dave Sexton, all, all his, he was great with kids. He he was doing all this learning, slide tackles and all that that people don't talk about. You yeah. know, you know, the art of a tackle. Wow, that's, I should yeah. That, yeah, 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 just you know that sort of stuff. Make sure you heard on the pitch. Uh, Dave Sexton would send kids away and stand on hills. You know, if you were training with the first team, yeah, it's like, I can't hear you. Go and stand on that hill for twenty minutes. And scream. And scream. You scream. Yeah, I... Literally like that. Make yourself heard. Wow. That's what you need to be doing. And it's true, 100%. Yeah, if an you're important not, part of the game, aren't it? That's the biggest part of the game, being heard. Right? Yeah. Frightening people into passing you the ball. Kids know yeah. Kids don't do that. No, they're yeah. for the ball, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't deal with that pressure, right? If my, like, my, no, I know that wasn't but if your dad was on you, could you? Was your dad like that? No, my dad was not like that, no. That's probably why we are bums and he nah. put them on <laughs> exactly. the line, right? yeah. What made you leave Coventry for Portsmouth? They were a, a the, great, you should, the greatest club in England, Portsmouth. I, well, this is what caught me because when you went, obviously you are tipped the next Mark Healy, Mark Healy, that's you? Right, you failed yeah. all that, you, you didn't live up to it. It's just so hard to live up to the expectations. <laughs> um, it, listen, it was, a big, it was a big decision for me because I had a, a, a couple of first division, and it was all the old first one, two, three, four division, so there was a couple of first division clubs that wanted me. Um, I didn't think they would be the right club for me at, at that particular age. Um, Portsmouth came to me, um, uh, Bobby Campbell, uh, ex-Chelsea manager, and he was bringing them through the leagues. So we had, we had some really good players. Had Neil Webb there, uh, Kevin Dillon, um, Alan Knight, goalkeeper. Oh, Knight, he was still there when I was there, what a guy. One, one he club did you, man. He did me, One yeah. club man, was mad, yeah, mad as a hatter, yeah. as most goalkeepers are, yeah. He uh, um, um, sort of taught me into it, you know, I want you to be my number nine, you know, and that's, that, that's what sold it for me, because I wanted to be a centre forward. When I was at Coventry, I was playing left wing, no, centre no, forward, yeah. left wing, centre forward, because they had Mick Ferguson and they had Gary Thompson, and I was a year behind Gary Thompson, so those two were in front of yeah. me all the time. So I wanted to prove to myself that I was that centre forward, um, and I, I wanted to take a step back, I didn't need to take a step back. I could have stayed where I was, but I, for me, it was Bobby Campbell selling it to me as my number nine. Yeah. And Alan Biley that was there at Portsmouth, great little um, Rod Stewart lookalike, a journeyman, <laughs> played for Everton, Derby and all that sort of, scored lots of goals as well. He was the experienced one, so we had the little and large combo, which was, it was, it was brilliant for me, you know, and then I had Kevin Dillon and Neil Webb and all those sort of players, creative players in the yeah. middle of the park. And it was boom from I guess from, from, part of big man. Yeah, Frank fantastic. Oh. One one of the best, one of the the best Atmospheres. stadium atmospheres to play in. You'd shite yourself. I, 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 mean, I, mean, I, mean, I refuse yeah. to go there, but 
Just because it's so, they're so close to the pitch, mate, and yeah. the noise that they create. It's yeah. even like two mate, it's like this. Yeah. Is but are they, are, they, are they a type that. I don't think that. You're going to say hard to please. Hard to please. Yeah. I think if you're on a bit for Portsmouth fans, they'll love Listen, it. if any player runs around, that's all football fans want to see. They want yeah. to see commitment, and that's all. That's that's what the game's all about. I, I run around, kick people, and put the ball you know, in, in positions for other people to score goals, score goals when, when the chance came around. But. So that's that, all. That's yeah. all fans want to see. One hundred percent effort. Does that change as a player? That when you get to that fans, do you feel your? You, see, that was the problem. Was I thought boys were slide tackling and that just when they didn't really need to do it, just to kind of get the it. front and part. So it does work both ways. But yeah. I get what you're saying. Mm. But how do you end up getting a call for the England squad in the second division? Uh, you, you go, good question. Uh, good question. Um, I was I was on the radar. Um, and normally when you're on the international, you played on the under-18s. Uh, under-19s. Under-19s, under, yeah. under, yeah, under yeah. but you get on that radar. I played at youth level, um, under-17s, uh, won a, a Youth World Cup with, a, with, with that group of players. Did you? Yeah. So that group of players then went on onto the under-21s. Um, um, we won that under 21's last under 21 side still to win it that was back what, in 18 you won the World Cup the uh, European Championship you, the wow. under 21's I did not tell you about that so um, so it was, it was it was crazy it was like it was like a three month period of playing finishing sort of coming into the end of the season at Portsmouth with 24 goals in 31 games or something um, and then coming off the back of winning the under-21 right. final yeah, up in yeah. Sheffield, scoring a belter against Spain 2-1 on that one, and then getting a phone call to, to you know, the triangular tournament that was at Wembley yeah. every summer to, to, to be in and amongst it from, from, from just basically from the under-21 setup. Um, I got into that um, thinking I was going to get five minutes and I did I got five minutes here and five minutes there five minutes against Russia so you know I'd got my, I'd got my three caps from playing at second division so book the holiday off to Magaluf you know and just about four any days. stories for Magal? Uh, no, no then Bobby Robson phones me up and says you're coming to South America with the, with, with the team we're playing the three we're playing Uruguay um, oh Brazil goodness. and Chile and, and it just that three months went from Boom, 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 boom to to madness, because in that short space of time, um, obviously the Brazil game, uh, playing in that, getting a call up for that, injured, it, circumstances and being in the right place at the right time. It's it's you know it's an incredible thing, but it yeah. is so true. I think in sport especially, centre forward got injured. Bobby Robson came to me the day before, put me his arm around me, said, "You're playing tomorrow, okay?" So I went, "Right, great, let's go." So you know. John Barnes scores that worldy. What were you playing in that game? I scored the winner. No, nobody ever remembers then that. Was that uh... No, no. But that was that's the goal that got me a move to to Milan from, as they say, second to be in Portsmouth. So it all happened within boom two months. Because what made Bobby Robson so iconic is so special. Because every time you speak to somebody like yeah. he, he's as icon as a legend. What what made him so special? He trusted all his players. And once you have that trust with, with, with your players and, and management, you have a special bond. I mean, he's, Don Howe was a real good coach and he was his number two. Right. Um, and Bobby was sort of the, the motivator, you know, very sympathetic, um, arms around you and all that sort of stuff. He was, you know, he could drop you, right? And I got dropped after two games in, in, in Mexico, the World Cup in Mexico. But he literally, as he said that, he made me feel 10 feet tall. You know, by what he what said, said to after him, that, yeah, huh? what came next, yeah. Which is that's yeah, the best people, ones, yeah. aren't they? Oh, the best absolutely. managers, yeah. yeah if, if you can't communicate that, and, and that went through the whole. You look at Bobby Robson. You know, he used to call Brian Robson um, Bobby. So, do you yeah. know what I mean? You yeah, get yeah. all the names. Ray 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 Wilkins was Ray Wilson. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the, the, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. You, know, you called me Tony many times. That's my dad's name. So he? yeah, but he, he was sympathetic with it. Did you ever see him losing it? But could you ever like really go for people? Um, yeah, he had that look. Aye. He had the look. You know, a bit like a bit like Walter. Mm. Walter would have you know the uh, that look, and you knew. But he had a good good group of players, you know, Terry Butcher and Brian Robson and Ray Wilkins, all, you know, good in the dressing room. 
And see, when you've got that in the dressing room, management becomes a lot easier. So you coming for the second division and that, who was the one that you thought, wow, what a player? Um, when you first got into that England squad, John Barnes? Glenn Hoddle. Oh! Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caviar. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. he frightening? Oh, he's best, but it's, well, it's on record, best ever player I played with. What's that? Can you remember a, him doing something in training, like your first couple of times with England? Yeah, thought, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah we, 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 we cracked up a good partnership straight away. Further down the line, and listen, I got, a, got his move to, to Monaco for him um, with, with Wenger, because Wenger thought he'd signed for Paris, and he hadn't, so we got him down there. And honestly, some days in training, you'd be like that. Everybody just stop and applaud him, both feet, you know. But because he was British, you know, that British type, and I think that cost him because he couldn't cover the ground like right. Brian Robson could do, or, you know, tackle and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And Platini said, Platini used to come and watch his train in Monaco uh, and especially study what Wenger was doing. Um, and he, he just, he said, he said, if Glenn Hoddle had been born in France, he'd have played 150 games by now for France. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's European coaching for yeah. you. You know, marquee player can do anything with the ball, either foot. You know, well, uh, that and, and, then, board, and, you, and you build a side. You build a side for Random, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who else was it? Was that who was that team? Was that John Barnes? Who else was the the big names in that team? Hoddle, oh, Terry Butcher. Yeah, Ray oh, Wilkins. Been, Ray you know, Wilkins. You know, really nervous going in there. Peter Shilton. No. Are you not? Not really. No, I just believed in myself. Yeah. Yeah. That probably yeah. goes back though, side to. The mentality your dad set you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You went into these yeah. situations, isn't it? Yeah. So then, is it after that goal, did the Milan contact your agent? The contact. The contact of Ray. The Ray contact, Wilkins. Yeah, the contact of Ray because Ray had signed in at Easter from Man United, right. so he pre pre contract. Um, uh, the contact of Ray. Um, bum, bum, um, so did Ray just come and chat your door one day when yeah, we were yeah, in England? Yeah, he just said I had literally three days after that game. He just said to me when I sobered up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say me and John Barnes had a belting a couple of days after that. So would Bobby, would Bobby let you? Would Bobby let you spend oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Well, we went straight. We had a, a massive barbecue with the, uh, uh, the uh, ambassadors, uh, British ambassadors, um, um, country so, retreat. That that literally the day after, and it was it was great, brilliant. We had a great time. We had a lot of good downtime. Yeah. Know? See, at international level, you have to get that because you don't see each other every day. Yeah. You know, so when you work international, you have to build. Team spirit. You have to build that up. And Bobby was very good. Did at Bobby that. have a beer with us? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So were you, were you drunk when AC, you heard that AC Man wanted you? No, oh, no, no. I was sobered up by then. Um, um, yeah, just knocked on, the, knocked on the door, walked into the bedroom. Did you, you only had a towel sure. on when you answered the door? Yeah. You only had a towel on when you answered the door? <laughs> no, no, I can't remember. <laughs> He, uh, he came in. He just said, "I've just had Milan on the phone." So I just thought, oh, "Really? Yeah." And I'd, you know, being a young young player, inexperienced, uh, all that sort of stuff, I just thought, "Well, I don't think Portsmouth will let me go because I've still got two years." And that's how I used to think, you know, right. because you know, that's you sign a three year contract, you you, you honour a three year contract, sort of yeah. stuff. So he said, "Well, you know, the clubs are talking." Um, and I said, well, let's just leave it like that then, if the clubs are talking. And he came back two days, he said, well, that's you, 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 you go into Milan. Did you not have an agent this time, then? Yeah, I did. Um, um, but I said, Look, I, I can't be going, because I've not even spoke to them. He said, well, the clubs have done the deal. So Portsmouth had done the deal with Milan for a million and a half quid. Uh-huh. Um, and all he got to do, so I had to fly back. I left the tour, tour early, <laughs> met my agent. Um, this is this is a big long story in the book because it's, it's it, it become it gets quite complicated. But we, long story short, we was in this near Heathrow Airport, a, a house, and just battered it out in a day on personal terms, and that was me gone. So you never even went back to Portsmouth. Just picked my boots up. Yeah. See these little lads, I'm off to my this is Kevin Dillon, Neil Webb, just clean them for me, son. <laughs> <laughs> well, but did you phone your dad and say, I'm going to AC Milan? No, I didn't speak to listen, Yeah, listen, um, I didn't speak to my dad for nine months when I was at Portsmouth because he fell out with me because he never moved down the league, right? So oh, right. Doing, going down the league, you know, so that was a, a big no-no for him because getting back up to that is a hard, hard achievement. 
So yeah. But that must have been a wee bit like I've, I showed you. I was right. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah, stepping yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, I've never yeah, got my yeah, move to mind. That was that's what drove me all my career, being better than my dad. I didn't want to be like my dad. I wanted to be better than my dad. All right, and that's always been that's 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 my outlook on life is to be better than the day you were before, and that's. I don't know if, if, you know, players that play at a level that I sort of played at for a, for a long time, that's the motivation behind it, being the best you can be, you know, part of that, that even though when you scored that, that that's, that's in the past, then you refocus. I think that's what keeps all the, the that top, top bracket, top bracket yeah. for, for a long time. And mentality. There's, there's you know, something in there. See if Portsmouth never let you go, would you have just continued going into training? I think you had a cane in it, didn't you? When he didn't get let go, yeah. would you have been fine with just going back in and... Yeah, 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 I'd have just gone back and you know, gone and played. Yeah, yeah, got on with it. I was, I was really enjoying myself. Loved, loved Portsmouth. I loved the people down there. A lot of friends down there. Um, you got a favourite pub? Um, Johnny Russell's. Was Johnny oh, Russell's there when you were Oh, I can't, I can't remember. Were you, were you known as a good player on Portsmouth? Brilliant. Captain. Were you, mate? When I was there, huh? Wow. They said better than Haley, didn't they? How many goals? Right. Uh, <laughs> so you see when you're flying over at Milan, I'm obsessed with this. Is it, is, it, is it first class or when you're flying over at Milan? When you go over to... the fly, is it private jet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We used to fly everywhere with, uh, um, when Berlusconi came in. Uh, when me and Ray were playing, if we played in Russia for England, his jet would be sent for us and we'd just come straight back because that's he wanted silly. everybody. That, but that's, that's how far they were ahead. You know, they wanted the players back, recuperating back at, you know, Milanello, the training ground amongst the players it was instead of like a trip to there to there to that and then back and then and then home like all the the other england players did yeah we were just picked up and taken so, 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 sorry do you fly in and go straight to the san siro no 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 straight, straight into lanati airport but then they drive you to san siro yeah 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 oh. no no they would, they would take you home and then obviously we we myself and ray we lived um, between san siro and milanello the training facility but we spent more time at milanello because it was like a hotel every player had their own room was so, this a training ground yeah 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 but that that but that's been there that had been there already another 30 years before we are even arrived at the club 40 years i'm gonna say arrived at the club so that sort of Training facility and where Europe was with training facilities was miles ahead of Britain. Do you think that's why they were dominating Europe at the time? Because Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. what would it be like? Maybe train in the morning and you could go and sit in your room or yeah, sleep. Yeah, sit in the morning. You had the yeah, gym work. You did gym before you trained in the morning. Out, warmed up all the muscles. Then you know you had the the, the restaurant up there, and then the lie in your bed, watch your telly, own personal phone. It's, that's 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 where that's where Europe was, and that's why I wanted to go to Europe and learn how to be a footballer, basically, and, and be coached. Because people think Italians, see when the Canio first came, you think Italians. I thought it'd just be like five sides in up the road, but they no, work like no, you will not believe. No, don't yeah, they? yeah, they're in the gym. They're in. That, that, that was the first time I, mean. I was into the into the gym for half an hour before you even walked out onto the pitch. You know, they were turning up an hour before training, everybody getting a rub, you know, straps, rubbed, gym, and then onto the pitch to do your, your, your stuff for... for and double week. sessions every day? No, if, if you was, we, Europe, we were sort of qualified for Europe, so the Tuesday and the Ita Cup Italia and all that sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, so, so it was a lot it, of games. Yeah, it was hard pre-season um, up in the uh, Italian mountains. But it was a, it was one of those. Everything was done properly. We had heart monitors back then, wow. you know. So instead of having everybody trying to run and be at the front of the group, everybody had to train within a certain um, heart rate. Heart rate, you know. So it was spread out. But everybody was working the same, you know. Yeah. But you know what I mean. So yeah, that's yeah. that's wow. where we were with that. That must have been quite a, a, a change because I can't yeah. imagine Portsmouth in the yeah. second division. I kept looking like behind me. Did you struggle yeah, at I first? Kept, I, kept, I was. Yeah. I was. That's, where is everybody? <laughs> what were runner? you in the back? No, I was at a front. Oh, well, yeah. It's always a good runner. Wow. Yeah. Again, coming for your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was, There's was, a story in the book about that, right? About the first pre-season, and I'm not going to say what it is, but, but it is a belting, and it, it was a reaction from all the coaching staff of one particular thing that happened. Right? Yeah. Wow, we need to get that. Can't be to read that. Yeah. See, um, it was Niels Lilton. Was that Niels, the first one? Niels, that was yeah. the other one your yeah. dad told you about. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Clough and Niels Lilton. Yeah. Yeah. Top man. Was Top he man. 58 World Cup, the, the Pelly yeah. final. He scored in that, yeah. you know. The, the, and he's, he's a great man. The second time at Milan. 
Exeter forward. He couldn't have been any better for me. Yeah. You know, he's Swedish, so laid back. You know, um, he'd take me for a walk after training, just walk around the pitch and ask me what I wanted out of life, how the family were, all that sort of stuff. You know, just so much time. And then if we had if we had a free week, he would take me uh, with um, Capello, who Fabio, who was doing the youth team. He just he just started doing the youth team, and he would just walk me through walk me through certain situations of where he wanted me to be. I don't want you tackling fullbacks. If you're tackling a fullback, that means a left-sided midfield player can't engage high up the park. So if he's not engaging high up the park, that means our fullback can't engage high up the park. So, you know, wow. we're, we're too stretched out. So I'm learning how to play the game of football. So right. Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's like brilliant. And I, so w- fun, walking yeah. through it, and he'd have all the cones out on the pitch. And this is, this is where we want you to do all the work because everybody behind you, and we want to play high up the park and play that pressing game. Yeah. The modern game. Yeah. That's what we're we doing. That do. yeah, yeah. So talk us through some of the names when you first went to Milan and the team. Well, we had Gali in goal, Tosotti at right back. We had Brazy at centre half. Costa Corta was there or thereabouts. He went out on loan and then came back. We had I- Icardi um, at left back for the first year and then Paolo came in in the second year um, we had Massaro Donadoni um, Paolo Rossi um, for one year brilliant playing with him learnt so much from him Wilkins obviously Ray obviously obviously um, yeah so it was, it was a right good growing side you know so I like to I like to say that we took them from where they were up to the next stage where the Dutch boys came in yeah. and then I sort of parted ways. See, um, but uh, Brazil and Maldini, had you ever seen anything like the two before? Nothing like Franco. Franco was unbelievable. Um, as a human being, unbelievable person. Yeah. And what way, just how much he cared and looked yeah, after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was brilliant. Absolutely number one person. You know, he was quick, right foot, left foot. He was like that. He was about five foot ten. He could jump seven foot. Honestly, he's the quickest player I've ever seen. The most well-balanced player, which balance and strength going together makes you twice as strong. And I saw him give Rummenigge in a, in a derby game, um, uh, give him 10 yards, and Rummenigge was quick. Yeah. Right? And he was there smoking a big cigar in front of him over about 30 yards. So yeah, that's how it was. He, he would eat the ground up. He would eat the ground up. But an unbelievable captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lead the team on and off the field. Yeah, because it was kind of him that that back line. Because the canal used to do was at Swindon. He's all like, Barres, he does the balls here, there. It's balls. all about the distance as well. It was all done on a whistle. There you go. And training like no him. Well, he would whistle on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah, that. Yeah, and that anybody anybody that was behind him, what a mouthful he would give him. So if he was coming up, if he was stepping up. Everybody had to be in front of him, so we would command that back line all the time. What would you do for a player like that these days? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Think of Harry Maguire and the 80 oh, million. Uh, so, I mean, you ever see him opening his mouth and you hear him very easy? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and would he be on the strikers as well, or is it just the back line he kind just of concentrated the back line. on? He governed the back line. Yeah. So you said you, like, you were learning off some of the players, would they actually, was it just the stuff they were doing on the pitch? You would you see different for other players you played with? Or did they actually yeah, talk to you about everything, the game? everything. What I was learning from 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 a manager personally, just on 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 walking through things. Um, what he was showing me on the on the training ground with Capello, that I was learning and taking that into the that the the British centre forward. Yeah. Because British centre forwards were all energetic. Yeah. You know, put themselves around, win hopeless balls, and keep the team high up the park. It was a a brilliant time for me. Um, you know, you get to play with Paolo Rossi for one year. You, you learn so much. If you, it's, it yeah, must be course. dumb if you can't learn yeah, off, yeah. off these sort of players. And I sort of picked pick, you know, little priceless little things from him. How was it playing against Baresi and Maldini in Tunis? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Would, they, would it be match tempo oh, yeah. match? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And would yeah. you bash them a bit? Oh my. Yeah. How would you take that? Would you be fine? No, fine. Yeah, yeah. I always, I always used to train how I used to play, and there's no half measures at all with me. Um, and I like to think I, you know, helped them. As, Make them as better much, defenders yeah, as, yeah, yeah. As, as, as as much as they helped me, sort of stuff. You know. So it was, yeah. It was all about, you know. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, an inexperienced player back then. 
but with a lot of energy and a lot of physical presence in, in playing up against, you know, in that, in that time, uh, you know, it was the, the Catanacha time where, you know, they would be just nailing yeah, it all yeah. the time, but they didn't get many players like myself. Yeah. John Charles had gone out there, was successful because he was a big centre forward. Is that Welsh, John Charles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Great man. Uh, for Juventus, he'd put himself about, but it's, it's being able to play and be in a presence. Yeah, it's, it's all right going and not being a presence. It's, I think Ian Rush, I think, probably found it difficult because you couldn't run behind defenders because he played with a sweeper. Yeah. You know, you know, and he was like a player that ran on to things to finish. The coach used to play him through, didn't he? Yeah, 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 so he's on his shoulder and, and going in. Whereas I, I was a completely different player. You know, I would be that player that, 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 that you saw me at Rangers. See the players you were mentioning there, I mean, top, top players, how were you no challenging for the title then? Uh, because other teams had better players. But don't forget, we were a young side as well. Right. So Massaro and uh, uh, Donadoni, these are, uh, um, well, Paolo was only 16. Um, Franco is, I think, a year older than me, so he'll be 61 now. They were all, you know, it was all being rebuilt because yeah. they'd been down the leagues for irregular betting or whatever you want to call it, and was starting to re establish himself as a force. Um, so it became a slow thing that built momentum over the period that we were there. What about downtime? See, obviously at Portsmouth, Didn't, I could imagine it was yeah. a great laugh in the dressing room and that. Did they, did they, that, that type of player, can you still get a laugh in the dressing room or is it very much focused we, on we being were, better? We, I was going to say we were always, always in Retiro, which was at the training ground. So we would be in there from a Thursday to a Sunday game. So we'd all be staying together. What you did know? your missus say? Well, I, I didn't like doing that. And I, I spoke to Neil's lead home about it and he just said, that's fine. You just come in on, on, on Saturday and have one night with us. So I trained and went home, oh, trained man. and went home, sort of stuff. Because it was much on a Thursday or Sunday. It was not for me, yeah, uh, not for much. me. So, but it was another way of looking at the game. Who would uh, you socialise with? Then? Just Ray Wilkins, mostly. Uh, well, Ray was, yeah. Ray was in the same housing complex as 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 herself, along with Fabio, uh, his family. With uh, yeah, they were all in, in in the same sort of residence, um, which which was good. Um, yeah, so it was, you know, take it turns in driving, into training and all that sort of stuff. But my, my, that was literally me. I was Mil uh, Milanello, San Siro, home. I couldn't go out anywhere. It Did was, you ever get a wee glass of red wine with Cabello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah well, you used to have red wine pre-match uh, pre on the table. You could have a, a glass. What, an hour before the game? All that sort of stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that's, me to Milan now. Wow. That's the responsibility. What do you know about place. San Siro? No, do you know what I want to realise? I'm surprised you've not asked it quite disappointing, actually. <laughs> See, you when they win the league. Who was the teams winning the league and who, who was the hardest players to play against? I want to know the top names. I would that question. You know? <laughs> not interesting. Uh, <laughs> you need to talk about what, it. In, in Italy? Yeah. Um, Verona won the league. Uh, they won the league uh, that year. Um, and don't forget, Maradona was at Naples at the same time as me. Well, against her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what was he like? Yeah, playing against her? Oh, he, he was a good player. Yeah. Would he, could he take the pass out of Berezi? Um, what a battle that is. Okay, That's so a question you should ask. <laughs> it, was always a, it was always a good game. But listen, we, the first year we, the, we, the, we, we did them and we, went to the, we did them in the semi final of Coppa Italia. Wow. And so we did them over two legs. We, the first time I played down in, in, in Naples, we, we drew 1-1 one, one with them. We didn't lose that many games against them. What was yeah. he like? Could you, was he talking all the time on the pitch or fighting? Or? Um, listen, he's, he was one of them players you just give him the ball and he, he did magic. That's, yeah. that, that's what he did. Um, wow. there's, there's a lot of players out there. I mean, the biggest for thrill for me, I played in my first game for being a pre-season game. I played against Zico. Uh, but what the names honestly. that you're dropping in there are sensational, <laughs> man. For, for Udinese, Ud and I, he was my hero right. as, as a as a as a, as a, as a young, yeah, yeah, a young yeah. player coming up. So I mean, he was good in the, in the I first. I couldn't wait. I, yeah, I only played the first half uh, pre-season game, so right. I played the first goal uh, game. I actually scored in that game, and then I was first to get the shirt off him after the game. So. What is he called Shannon? Really? Um, yeah, of course you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, so you think you're like, what a career, players. man. Well, that, that was, that, that's why that league was the best league in the world. You know, you had Socrates and you had all these players playing 
um, and, and, in that period. Who was your hardest player you played against? Claudio Gentile. Oh, uh, do you remember him? Oh, Gentile, he was known as touch tight, wasn't he? Oh, uh, that's him, uh, wasn't it? There's a, there's a, I think there's a caption of him on YouTube, uh, Maradona, in a, in, a, in a game where he's absolutely, the, no, the ball's nowhere near him and wow. he's just punching him in the ribs and kicking him in the air and, and all that Did he do that to you? Yeah, yeah, but he got the same back. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was him and Passarella, and uh, there's, there's two good stories, uh, as I say, in, in, the pic, in, in the book that, you, that you'll have to read. The Passarella one's a really good one. Wow. Much as the book. Yeah. It's funny, it's tight for me just now, but I really want to read this. Hey, hey, he's, 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 I mean, he's 1995. Oh, for these sort of stories, mate. mate. Give get me that, 10. Get that, that price yes. up. See, what I wanted to ask though, just is uh, uh, for Capello. So you said Capello took the youth team at that time? Yes. So could you tell, just speaking to him about football, that he'd no, go and be on the line? Why? What was it yeah, he had over the guy, was calm. the manager at the time? He was calm. Was he calm, man? He was both calm. You know, he, he had a presence. Um, uh, I'm going to say young family as well, because his kids were this, roughly the same age as ours. Um, and he, he, yeah, but he, he'd been and done it all, you know, he captained Italy. And oh, as a player, like, yeah, he'd done yeah, it all. Yeah, he'd yeah, done yeah. it all. So coming in and, and coaching the kids, um, you have that respect. I mean, yeah. it's, it's Fabio Capello, you like 16 and 17, and you're going like that, and he, he's telling you to do things and do it this way. Yeah, if, if you're not doing it or oh. picking it up from that, you. you You've got no hope ahead. Yeah, yeah. But what about the San Siro? Talk about that, especially the derby games. You that, and how yeah. Have you been to San Siro? Never, mate. Never. Oh, yeah. mate, yeah, you need, you to, need go. to go. I watched it in my hand. I watched it in my hand. What a game it was. Yeah. Did he share it? Still share it? I thought yeah, it was yeah, yeah. toxic. Yeah. Milan have been trying to get out of that stadium for the last six or seven years. Do they hate each other? Oh, Is yeah. it proper hatred, though? Proper. Yeah, Is yeah. It? Proper hatred. Yeah, yeah. Proper, proper stuff. What was your first derby? First derby was five, six games into my career. Um, oh. Listen, this is this is how this is how you know certain times, certain events in, in a player's career, and it's. It, I used to obviously was fortunate to be able to do it pretty early in a career. You know, like scoring against the biggest rivals and all that, and, and, that and that and that comes in on the derby game, the fifth game in um, playing. On, it's like all the all the planets aligning themselves again to you know to to come in line sort of stuff, and you know. Colavati, ex ex centre half, who jumped ship from Milan, wow. uh, international captain as well. He jumped ship when Milan went down the leagues, uh, down right. the leagues, and he joined Inter. Wow. So he was playing for Inter that day. And you this, scored the Inter. Uh, yeah, I scored the winning goal. Talk us through the goal, come on. Oh, it's just a ball into the box. Just, just a ball in the box. San Siro. Yeah, yes, and a ball into the box, and just typical Haitley header. Yeah, was yeah. it, mate? What was Zenga? I can't even believe he went for it, actually. <laughs> What was Stupid atmosphere? Zenga! What, what are you thinking? Like? Um, there was, I think, 96,000. Oh, you couldn't, you could it, it was the only time, you, you, if you walk out, you go down to the dressing room and you walk up onto the pitch. And as you're walking up, you can, all the hairs on your, your arms and the back of your neck are sta standing up. The electricity in the stadium, that's the, the only time I think I've ever felt, felt wow, that man. in a game. But you couldn't see any exits, you know, it was rammed, it was over full. Um, all he could see was faces. I don't know, it was that tightly packed in. Wow. That is see, see the fans over there, they're, they're fanatics, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it ever spot, because there's been times in Italy where like, fans have came to training grounds and that never happened when you were there. Yeah, ultras run football clubs. Do they? No, they do. Do they? Yeah, yeah. So did you ever get a bit off the ultras? Um, no, we would do it all right. I've got a real good relationship with, with the Ultras. I was over a couple of years ago um, with all the guys that run it for the 50 year anniversary, hey. uh, the Kurd of Uh The good guys, good guys, but. Uh, they don't want to cross them. They don't want to cross them. But see, once you score a goal like the goal I scored, you're a hero. It, they just put you, that's what Italians do, they put you on a pedestal and you remain there forever because it's such an important part of the history of the football club because where they had come from and where they were trying to get to. Well, I, mean, I can listen to this all day. Sorry, last question on this as well, just a, when I drink vast enough about Maldini. Yeah. So Maldini comes in the first team as what, a 16 year old kid? 16, yeah. He was, 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 was in and out at, at 16, um, but then the second year he-, he So 17? He was, yeah, he was- And is he, is he, when he's training, is he like the best player there at 17? He's, he's up there, he's up there with it. But that's what I say, the, the, the best 16 year old player in all my travels, and I'm, and I'm talking about, I've seen some great players. Um, 
Charlie Miller. Charlie you Miller. Said that. Yeah, wow. Charlie Miller was. I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I rocked up at, at Rangers for the first two or three training sessions. I said, oh, who's, 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 this, "Who's this kid?" He said, "Oh, he's just a young lad from Castle Milk." So they'll put uh, words in your mouth here, right? But was Charlie Miller at sixteen on Paro Maldini at sixteen? Yeah, as a as a player, absolutely one hundred percent. He was he was Charlie Miller was sensational. Uh, yeah, great player. Just great wonderful. footballing brain as a sixteen year old. Yeah. Is that that side of the brain that's fucked like, up? It's like that, it's like that <laughs> Phil, Phil Foden, you know, how he carried the ball and he's, you know, he dropped his shoulder and do a trick and just stand there and it, it, wow, at 16. Man. This is what you want to hear about, aren't it? The big names, man. We can't go back to the... Nah, we can't go back to Kevin now. Stuart McCall and that. I know you played with Stuart McCall. <laughs> what about Sly? Can I just... Slider. Slider, <laughs> Slider McCall. There's been one name that's been... been air of time for... Bella Scone. That's what still, crazy. Yeah. Another, uh, he's a Bella Scone, Scorey. Scorey? No, there's one in the book. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but oh, I oh my. Yeah, you need to read the what book. Was he, what, what was he like? Is that when you first met him? I had a real good conversation with him. Did you? Um, that's oh, all I'm going to say. Oh, I know it's oh, a bit. Uh, wow. Yeah, I was like 22 years old, and this guy comes in, and I just told him exactly how it was. Did you? No, I did. Did you ever get a night out with him? Because he let you. Yeah, was... yeah, yeah. Up at his mansion. No way. Oh. So who's there? Yeah, yeah. I'm not telling you. Oh, is this a story that's in the book? Yeah, yeah. There's loads of these in the book. I need the book right here, right now. I'm going to flip. But it was weird because my dad was in Berlusconi and didn't give Capello the job, did he? Yeah. Why not? Why did he not give him the job? He came in and, and, and Fabio got the job literally five games before the end of the season and when I left in my last season. Right. He came in and then he, he, he got that job. But it's, 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 it's a good story. Right, last one on Berlusconi. Yeah. Well, he, 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 all I'm going to say is he interviewed all the players but who should get it? But the players were coming in and out in five minutes. I was in for 45 minutes with him. Was it just you and him or was it somebody <laughs> else? Uh, yeah, he had his boys around him. Did he? Yeah, yeah. He always had his boys around him. Would he ever come in the dressing room? After a game or before a game? Every game he'd come in and pick the team. No! And what's your manager doing? Just taking it? Read about it. You're not going to say it now, you know? No. I'm not taking it for Read about it. Which, sorry, can, what's the date again the book comes out? 25th of November. That's my birthday. Yeah. Here you go. What, That's what I'm getting you. I'm going to get you. Please. I'll bring it to the That's podcast. That's unbelievable. Eh? Yes. Great story. I'll get your boys a signed copy. Oh, oh what a man. man. Uh, but you were England's main striker. I don't but, like but England. But this guy's killing us. Oh, you don't know what? Do you want to know any more about Milan? I can read the books. I don't want to kill it, but it was, that, yeah. made, that was sensational stuff. Yeah. It really was. I've never heard of Milan back in the day. Oof. It's the Gary Lineker that kind of affected you. For being the main striker at England. <sighs> no, Gary guy. played. Gary played. I, I mean, I was I was in the team before Gary, and then Gary came in as that goal scorer because Gary was the goal scorer. You know, I was I was a creator, and it was just eighty six. We went there. Went, just when you remember, Gary broke his uh, wrist. He broke a wrist on the last game. In the build that. up in, in the build up to to the eighty six World Cup, he, <laughs> he, he he fractured his wrist, yeah. and we played against Canada. I, I'd scored with. Scored in that game, 1-0. We beat Canada, 1-0. Then we went to uh, Los Angeles and we played Mexico and we won 3-1. I scored two in that game. Right, so I scored three goals going into the World Cup where Gary had been out with right. broken wrist. And then we drew, uh, we drew with uh, Portugal and Morocco in the first two games. And I got left out of the side to, to play a different system right. where Peter Beardsley came in. Gary... You know, Gary came, we played in those first two games, but he was a little bit off his game. Right. He had a couple of real good chances that could have won us both games, which would have been a completely different story for me going on, going forward. So I only played in the first two, two games of that World Cup and then got that arm from Bobby Robson. Um, we're going to play a different system. Peter Beardsley was coming to come in, and uh, uh, so the, rest, the rest is history. Did Beardsley go play off the Lineker? Yeah, he, yeah. he sort of did that floater. Yeah. you know the floating, the, fold, the ten, yeah. yeah, sort of stuff. And then Gary went on and got the golden boot that year. Wow. So just it's, it was in, it's like you said yeah. about time and places, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you know whether the eighty-six World Cup was? Yeah, Andy God. Which one it was? Or what country? Begins with an M. 
Wow, this guy is ever my. How'd you look? Italian, ain't it? Italian, Italian, ain't it? <laughs> how'd you look back in that 86 World Cup in Mexico? Um, he just it told was, you he played yeah, the first two days. No, how did you look back in that? Oh, it was a great. It was. A, I mean, I, a great experience. I mean, it was. It was hard. I mean, I lost. A, I lost just over one stone in weight in wow. the first game. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was hot and altitude. All that sort of stuff. It was a great place to go. You know, everybody wants to play in a World Cup as a as a as a young young footballer's dream. Um, so, yeah, it was on onwards and upwards after that. I never sort of lurched around and being dropped and all that sort of stuff. I just wanted to get back and get you know, back get get back on it. A stone a game. So we need to take Kev Kyle over there for ten games, <laughs> isn't it? Kev, <laughs> so talk me through a hand of God. Can you see the hand of God through where you're sitting on the bench? Yeah. yeah. But so the, was the bench in the middle of the pitch? Yes, everybody, then, everybody saw it. So the ball comes looping over. Yeah, yeah, you saw this hand come up and it just went, whoop. But I brain peel at Shilton because Peter Shilton should have knocked his block off. Yeah. As a goalkeeper, you, you, what you, do? You, you try and nullify your opposition's best player or yeah. best asset. And that was, that was an ideal opportunity. He could have punched the ball, he could have took his head off. You know, he could have completely. Well, you just got mental in the changing room after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could probably listen who's going mental on the touchline. But see, when it happens, so you all going to each other saying, that oh, it's a free kick, or did you? It's a free kick. We thought you that started... we saw the linesman, and, and he ran over to the linesman sort of stuff, and the referee's just given a goal. So that's, that's, that's how it happened, as quickly as that. But everybody, I would say, 95% of everybody that was in that stadium saw the handball. Where is VAR when you need it? Yeah. Did anybody pull him up, though, after the game? Maradona. I'm sure I've read that somebody was at Terry Butch and somebody got a, a P test while I'm after it and they said, Did you did you handballed yeah. it? Uh, I, I probably. I'm yeah. not there's a lot of a lot of stories around around that. That time. Yeah. Did you did you ever pull him after the game or tunnel or No, not really. No. No. You'd be fearing, wouldn't you? It must be heartbreaking to go go to tell him that obviously scores yeah. one well, of the best goals in the history yeah. of the game, but Still with a handball, it's, I mean. Yeah, it's a disappointment. It's always a disappointment to get cheated out or something, you know. But that's the that's the game. Well, have you ever seen anybody play at that level though? Because that tournament he is was the best level, ever seen. Yeah. Oh, listen, he was he was he, he was the most talented one-footed player I've ever seen in my life. You know what he could do with one, most people couldn't do with two. You know, he was he was sensational. See, have you never, obviously it's hindsight now, but have you never scored that goal and England win that game, do you think that team could have won the World Cup? England team? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. And because we had, uh, Gary was scoring the goals, we had a formation that was working for us, we had some good players and we had a good bench as well. We yeah. had a really, really, really strong bench. How did the nation take you and how, how was the press for you when you get put out? Did they hammer you? Listen, there was, there's a lot of politics going on. Don't forget we had the, the Falklands War and all that oh, sort of stuff man. that was... Yeah, you know, on the back is. of all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we just go, as footballers do, you just you, know, you put that one to bed and you move on, you go back to your club and you concentrate on the next thing. Wow. Uh, what about your team's performance at the 88 European Championships? Did that maybe cost you a place in the 90 squad? I think what cost me a, a, a place in the, 90, in the 90 squad was the fact that I played literally all season, every game um, for a cl at club level. And then I played through the summer at international level, at World Cup, and obviously and then the Euros. And I didn't have a rest at all. I was just continually playing. There was not, not like the modern game where you get the, you know, the rotation, rotation and yeah. all that sort of stuff. You know, players in the red zone, we need to rest them and all that sort of stuff. You just played and played and played and played. Invariably, I would be playing, carrying an injury most of the time. Um, and then, you know, that, your body just gives out on you. Um, yes. And I had a massive, massive, um, a massive injury um, at, at Monaco in my second year at Monaco off the back of the Euros. Um, and that just boshed me for two years. How do you find out you're not in the squad? Do the phone you or do you just read it when I get No, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby was great. He, he would send, he would do, he'd always be in contact and he would send, he used to send flowers over to, to the missus and all that sort of stuff. Did he? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was I mean, he was a great manager and he just said, I need you to be playing um, and I couldn't get back playing. Um, but the, the story behind that is a, is a chance meeting with Graham Souness in 1990 because he was staying at the Hotel de Paris, right place at the right time. I'm walking around with the kids and bump into him. So if you'd have been at the World Cup, you wouldn't have bumped into him? Mm -hmm. Wow, man. 
And then that's how it all happened. Fate, innit? Fate. Yeah. Right, leaving Milan. I wouldn't make, like, why did you leave Milan? Uh, Balasconi wanted me out of the country. Yeah, yeah. What, as in a threat, like? No, 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 he didn't uh, want me to go and join another team. Like, there was oh, Ro- okay. Ro- Ro- you better leave the country, you're getting Ro- Ro- Roma, Roma, <laughs> Roma and Verona both wanted me. Um, but I, listen, I, I'd, I'd set up a, a great rapport with the Milan supporters, and it's like I could not play for another Italian team. Right. You know, it was, and it was in everybody's best interest for me to go and play in another. And but I, why I, not just stay at Milan? What was the reason for not just staying at Milan? Because we had the three, it was only three. Oh, and they were signing three, Hula and... Yeah, but they'd already signed Hula right. and Van Basten and Rijkaard, oh, right. you know? So, you know, we, we could have stayed there, but it was only three foreigners, and yeah, Berlusconi yeah. three would have, would have always played. Right. And, and rightly so, there were three fantastic Did players. you get a wee chance to see them? They, I, 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 saw, I left pretty quickly um, at, at the end of that season um, and became... Um, Wenger's first sign in at Monaco. Wenger, what was he like? Very Genius. intense. He was. was he? Uh, yeah, I was going to say he's, he was. When I joined, I would be twenty-five. Yeah, twenty-five, twenty-four, twenty-five, and he would be probably thirty-five. So he'd only be ten years older, not even ten years older than me. And he just sort of played at a lower level of French football, but he was emerging as one of these, you know, new. Kids on the block, yeah. with different ideas, different techniques, coaching methods, and all that sort of stuff. And you know, he, he popped and gave Monaco. Monaco gave him the the the, the reins to take Monaco uh, for on a on a. I'm going to say on a on a journey. And yeah. that's, I think that's the, the modern word nowadays um, into where they could get to. But we had a great great side. You know, you know, the, um, it's. Jean-Luc Etri, French international, uh, Luc Sonor, French international, left back, Amoros, uh, right back, French international, Batiston, centre half, um, all these sort of players. I played with Ramon Diaz, who was Maradona's partner for Argentina, up front. Oh. And we just had a good side with a, with a visionary n- young manager that came what, in. What's the, first, what's the first meeting where Arsene Wenger linked? Does he tell you weaknesses in his game that he thinks he can improve um, on you? No, my, one of my first meetings with, with, with Wenger was on the training ground. He had, don't forget, he had uh, Petit um, was there as well. Right. Uh, international players, Jean-Philippe Roy, international player. And you know, he had different ideas of different coaching and all that sort of stuff, which was, which was great for me because I'm still learning the game. Yeah. And so I'm bringing the Italian side of the game and the British side of the game into the French side of the game, which is slightly quicker from the Italian football but not as fast as British football. So it was a, a, a different way of, and a different sort of technique that you needed. Or was I blending both of the, 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 the Italian technique and the British technique into to playing in a French league? Um, so it was, it was. So what did he say in your first meeting on the training ground? He just said, I want you to score goals. That was <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, was yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did just... you ever pick your brain about what Milan done? Or did yeah, you totally focus well, on the, 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 He picked my brain because he, he said, after a week of pre season, I'm looking for a number 10 to play with you, um, to play especially with you. And then, then this is where Glenn Hoddle's story comes in because he's supposed to sign for PSG. He said he, and he said, no, he's signed for PSG. I said, no, he hasn't signed for PSG. He said he has. I said, no, he hasn't because he's my agent, is, is, is his agent. Yeah. So he flew straight down, deal was done in a day and the rest is history. We win the league. We go to the French Cup final that year. And you know, it's another big learning stage for me. But that was my only year because then... I'm going to I'm say the September, I got the big injury against Galatasaray at the, at the year of Stade Louis Day. I'm going to say this now, and Cammy, you've made us some Wenger's managerial career. Because if you didn't sign Glenn Hoddle, he yeah. doesn't go and win the league with Monaco. Yeah, yeah. He'd be as good a coach as you want, but if you didn't get Hoddle, you didn't win the league. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, yeah, I'm scoring you can a lot. take full responsibility the for the I'm Invincibles. Scored, yeah, you I'm made the Invincibles well done. Yeah, they scored the goals. Um, my, we, had, we had a side, as I say. Uh, yeah, it was Patrick Battiston, um, great captain and leader, centre-half, um, as I say, Jean-Luc Hectory, goalkeeper, French international. It was full of international yeah. players so that just were, were led by an in- inexperienced young man. But talk is a bit, so what's you and Hoddle's thinking? What you, what's Hoddle saying to you as soon as I got in the half-turn? Running say, run in behind. Yeah, yeah, good players. I'll have, find yeah, you. Yeah, but good players. Oh, it's a dream, it's a dream. Yeah, yeah, but you don't it's have to, best, you yeah. communicate up here, don't you? You, you just, it's the eyes. You know, you do that, and then he, you know what Glenn's going to do. He's, he's seen me do that, and he knows where he's going to put you. Yeah. 
honestly, um, Clive Allen. Clive Allen scored 48 goals for Tottenham playing with Glenn. Yeah, in one season. Wow, man. That's, I remember Robbie Keane done it to me. That's, 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 what, yeah, a good, that's what a 10 does. Yeah. He creates all over, and Glenn can do that. Would that be your favourite player to go and play up with? I don't. Um, yeah, Glenn, because I sort of I played as, a, as the European striker, the lone striker with, with, with Diaz out well, on one side or one side, you know, Yusuf Forfana as well, Ivorian. And he would sort of, I would occupy a lot of things and that would allow Glenn then to come into the box. Glenn, cause that, that season, Glenn scored more headers in, in that season than, than he scored in a, in a, in a lifetime in his yeah. career. Like yeah. just watching me and, and playing from me sort of stuff but you know it's, that's, how it, that's how it works yeah. did you know for early on for working with Wenger that he was going to have the career he had well no, I don't think you could ever expect you could see you could see his potential I mean he was driven I mean he was never out of a track so a day off if he had a day off he'd go and watch second division German football or he'd go off to Italy and watch third division football or something like that it was very 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 intense yeah. Would he take all the training? Oh, why? Every single thing, what, from like we're talking yeah. warm up to the end. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the, down, yeah. the warm down and all that lot. The, uh, the fitness guy. The the fitness guy and the physio would all would all come out and you know do all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. And what was he thinking? Was it all possession based? Like you're going to dominate the game possession? Yeah, wise? high energy. High, high energy. energy. All high energy. Yeah. But see, like we came to England, didn't he yeah. change the diet and all that? But you'd have been used to that for, for loving it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. the dietary thing, the, the requirement of refueling, when to refuel, what to put into your body, all that sort of stuff was done in Milan. But then, you know, that, that sort of flowed over into, into the French system. Yeah. You know, Wenger would have been all over studying every part of every aspect of football, European. As I say, when he, he left Monaco, he went to to Japan, everybody yeah, went, right. why, why on earth has he gone to Japan? Just probably to study another different way of Japan life. After more, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And he went from Japan straight to Arsenal. Arsenal, that's right. Right. Yeah. See, through your career, then, would you ever challenge a manager if you never really agreed with it? Yeah. Would you? Yeah, yeah. I was, my old man said, always ask, always ask questions, right? Why? Why are we doing this? You know, and I always say that to Tom. I said, and, and any young player, I always say, ask questions you say if somebody asks you to do this say why was there ever a manager that never liked you asking no 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 because you didn't quite respect yeah, for it yeah 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 i did yeah why are we doing that you know um, can you play it out a bit more in in my mind why and how sort of stuff yeah yeah it's there's no if you don't know or you don't ask questions you, you never get answers yeah right fit more that's great in monaco <laughs> but what i want to know the lifestyle in monaco is that the greatest place in it? It was, it was, it, listen, it was an absolutely breath of fresh air for me because I couldn't go out and do anything in, in Milan, you know, couldn't take the kids out, it was mobbed everywhere. What, because fans would mob you? Yeah, oh, absolutely, it was a no-no anywhere. I couldn't do anything, I was training ground, San Siro, home. Yeah, you said I had that, a yeah. little restaurant in my village that I knew the owner of, who used to get us, you know, out of the way. Yeah, it was a breath of fresh air because, you know, we was out and about and you could be walking through the streets. I mean, I had a uh, Ayrton Senna living the, 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 oh floor, my what? the floor below me. Um, Did you speak to him? Yeah, yeah, he was a mad football fan. Yeah, or my racing car drivers all want to be footballers, right? Before the Grand Prix, we used to go to uh, Bogu Sumer and St. John Capferat and we'd have a five-a-side competition uh, with all the, the Formula One um, so you've played five or six with Ernest Senna? All, all, all them sort of things. Is he hopeless at that boy? Yeah, he's good. He's Brazilian. Was he? He's Brazilian, so man. He was, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get a beer one or a glass <laughs> of champagne over it? Well, i read about it. Killing me here, I need to know. Boris Becker. Insane. Boris Becker was in the, the next building next My to us. And he was, yeah, a typical German. <laughs> Is it great to see Boris again? <laughs> it's been so long since you've seen him, hasn't it? Oh, right. Who would you do if I told you? Play with George Bear. George Weir. George Weir came in, in, in into, the, yeah, in, into the side, um, literally as I was get, got injured. Um, so he was a real young player, and he was one of these players. So you looked at him on the training ground one day, and you think, "How is he ever going to be a footballer?" No way, really. Yeah. Well, because he, he was so raw. It, yeah, yeah. And then some days you would go, "Wow!" It was, you know, it was one of those. Yeah, it was either it was either brilliant or hopeless. I mean, George was a bundle of fun as well. He was, was he? big. Did he yeah. love the nightlife in Monaco? 
Um, I wouldn't like to say. I think we all enjoyed the, 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 the nightlife. Can you, what's the best night you had in Monaco? Can you remember? Mm, or the best you know, day? You can read about it. Is that in the book as well? Fuck. <laughs> We need to get this book. Geez, a few other names, so, so Senna, Bob well, Becker. Yeah, Bears. well, Prince Albert, uh, 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 Cass is a good friend, um, you know, all their, all their family. I mean, he's the same age as me, so we, we used to rock around, and I had two years where I didn't play, so most nights he would rock up and we'd go for a, a wee soiree. Oh, man. I'd love to go to Monaco. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good How guy. He's always, he knows How can you, you sit with two scumbags after you've He you always knows when you're in Monaco <laughs> because you always get that call. Right. So as soon as you land in Monaco, he'll phone you? Oh, in, in, when, not to that extent, but he gets to find out very quickly when you're there. And he said, oh, he'll come and see me or we'll go up and, and have a chat and all that. Like, myself and Glenn went to do a thing for, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think it might have been when Chelsea were playing Monaco in Champions League and uh, we went over to do something for ITV and literally before we got to the hotel, uh, the call was sent out to, before you go, you've got to go and see Prince Albert. So you could keep on top of it, you know. And what, you just got Jesus? Yeah. Basically. Just sat in Chella? Yeah, just sat in his private room. This oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Anyone else in that apartment got that? Is that it? Glenn, Glenn. Glenn Hoddle, yeah. yeah. It was just Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> but then, mate, what's the thing? Jen, but Jen Wenger made Sorry, way Sam. a better player. It's a, it's yeah. a minute he has. Yeah. Without oh, yeah, you're you're flying, yeah, I thought he gave him discipline. Yeah, he you brought a lot of discipline. <laughs> Wenger taught me the, the best thing I got from from Wenger was not to be late. You know, historically footballers are all late, aren't they? For you, I think you were two minutes late. Yeah, for yeah, the day. yeah. I always have. No, never. No, been late. I'm always not. early, and and that's another another thing. He said, don't be early either. Be on time. He said because if you're early on the pitch or late on the pitch, you're out of position. Right? Oh wow. Yeah. Pearls of wisdom. Wow, I was when you think about it, it's spot on, isn't it? It's spot on. So if you're in early, the ball's gone by on you. If you're, if you're in too late, it's past you. Oh my. So be on time. That's so he made, me, made me stand up on a bus, right, and recite a line in French, because I spoke Italian pretty good, but I d didn't take on in French, because they were all speaking Italian or English. Right. So he would make me go on and say, Je suis désolé d'être en retard. Um, and then bar on all that sort of stuff. I'm sorry for being late and all that sort of stuff. He made you stand up the bus and say that. Yeah, yeah. So and you, there's nothing worse than being embarrassed in front oh, of people. So you would never be late. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was always no, I was always on time. Tyler. Yeah. Wow. Was he quite intimidating, finger at times? He was. Yeah. 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 Wow. If he had the red face, the red face would come on. Did yeah. Because I always thought he seemed to be a bit too nice at Arsenal. No, there. no, no. They've all, all top managers have all got that side to them. Whether well, they, they express it in fiery expletives yeah. or just that fiery look, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so leaving Monaco, you, you've kind of touched on it. So you're mm -hmm. sitting in a hotel with the kids. Mm -hmm. You're still at Monaco at this time. I'm still, you... I've still got four years to go on a contract at Monaco. But are you unhappy or are you happy? I'm happy as Larry. Yeah, kids are doing well in international school. And the, you know, the football's going well, apart from the injury. And I'd, you know, I'd had four operations getting back from, from the original. Um, and I'd, you know, that's why the club gave me. Wenger came to me and he just said, I said, this, this is why we're giving you this contract. I believe that you'll be bigger and stronger and better than you were before the injury. So they gave me this, this. How much was it a week again, you said? A lot of money. It was a lot of money, yeah. A lot of money. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then bumped into Siri um, in the Hotel de Paris um, and just said, do you fancy coming? Because this was the... the Do you think he knew that you were in that hotel and that's why you went? No, no, no. I was just walking. I was, I was staying in, in, in my residence in, in Monaco. Right. And that, this was in the Casino Square. So I was just having a walk around. And, and just by chance bumped into him. That was it. Wow. But I'd known Graham from, from Italy and that sort of stuff. Because right. we used to, sometimes used to get the families together on a Sunday. Um, and, and have a, you know, an atta. Liam Brady with his family, um, Trevor Francis, his family, and Graham and Ray and myself, and our families all together. Wow, life. I don't know, this makes me a bit stupid, but see at that time, see leaving Monaco to go to Rangers, would that have been seen to have been a wee bit of a, a come down or? Um, to go from Monaco to Rangers, I think, uh, listen, I spoke to, 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 um, to 
to Arsene about this. And he just said, listen, he said, whatever you want to do is the best decision for you. It will be the best decision for me. Yeah. Because he said, all I want is the best for my players. Right? So possibly you might need to change a look to get away from the injury and all that sort of stuff. But he said, I've, I've vis- I had the vision of you and, and George Weah playing together. And that, that's, that's what he said to me. Um, so I went away and chatted um, to, to the family. Um, what, was, what I wanted to do or what we wanted to do. And, you know, as, as always, the family would always say, well, we'll do whatever you want to do. Um, I, I could see what Graham was doing. And I'd say, I'd known Graham for a, for, a, for, a, for a while and still pretty f- pally with him. Um, and he just said, you know, it's there. Um, so I, I went, went back to, 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 to Arsene and just said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Um, so did you just phone Graham, set up and say, right, I'm coming? Yeah, I just went back in. I just said, yeah. I said, do the deal. You do the deal with Dennis Roach, my agent. And he, was, he was the super agent at the time and it always been my agent. And as I say, I came for one fifth of the money. Uh, that that uh, you were getting at the Monaco? Yeah, yeah, and, and getting taxed. Oh my <laughs> so God. So it, it was all about the football for me. How hard was that for going for, I think it was a five bed in Monaco to a two bed in Possel you got when you moved here? Oh, to yeah. <laughs> I was lucky to get the Possel, I'm telling you. Um, but how was the difference in lifestyle? Yeah, it was was it hard to, to adapt to first? It was getting, uh, listen, it was getting back into a British dressing room. Yeah, that, 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 the banter, the mentality and all that yeah. sort of stuff, it was good. Yeah, I mean, oh, it was good, was it? Was oh, that a nice... Very hard, yeah. I, I, can, I can bat it backwards and forwards with the best of them. You can ask my missus that. <laughs> 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 See when you met, when you met Rangers was it was your football completely different? Obviously you'd played in Britain, but was it completely different for you? Obviously Monaco and Milan. Yeah, it was a lot faster. Um, did you like that better, or did you enjoy? Yeah, it is if you're a striker. Yeah, if you're it's a striker, you. Yeah, I mean, you got got to go to Milan, right? You could probably get three chances, three chances in two games. So you it's need so to be it, yeah. you need to be taking oh, fifty. Right. You've got to be high percentage. You've got to be over fifty percent taking the chances. To, to survive at that level. I, I, I managed to get close to that. Um, same in France. Um, but in, in British football, you get in chances and chances and chances and chances. That's why good players that were coming uh, at that time you know, mm-hmm. in, into, into Rangers and into Celtic, more so Rangers, um, were, would succeed because of you know, the, their ability to be able to do the job that Graham wanted them to do. Yeah. Was there a big drink, drinking culture back then? Obviously, so yeah, you've been yeah, at, yeah, was yeah. It? And how did you find that? Obviously, being at Milan, where you did you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was brought up. Why do you? Like, because you've been, and also because you've been so professional in maybe Milan. Yeah, for all yeah. Those listen, years. listen. There's a, there's a time and a place, um, and we all knew the time and the place. You know, you, you have to, you have to. I think celebrate everything. You sev- your life in celebrating a win. You have to celebrate that, right? But then you have to leave it. Yeah, you know, you leave it, you leave it, you park it, you reset. And we were good at that, you know. Where was your usual haunts when you did go? Oh, I was always in uh, Vicky's, weren't we? Vicky's, yeah, 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 down there. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was always in there. Um, yeah, we'd, listen, we'd just batter around. The Ho Wong was a, was a, a good starting place for us, for a Chinese. Yeah, you know, you know, all the boys there, all boot suited and booted. And, you know, it was, it was all, you know, signed off by, you know, management. Um, just as long as we weren't on the front page. The next that? day, that was the only stipulated. Could you quite believe in soonest left with four games to go? And no. the title race was still left. I'm bringing you there to yeah, the yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, nothing ever surprises me in football. Right. Nothing ever surprises me. Yeah, anything can happen at any given, any given time. Um, so that's why I always say, always enjoy this minute, right, in football, because this is a minute you're never going to get back. This is why you should train how you play, because uh, it could be your last game. You yeah. never know when it's going to be your last game. So enjoy it, put everything you've got in it, and, 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 and enjoy every minute of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a simple way of looking at, at life. Did he, tell, did, you, did he tell you he was leaving, or was it sort of out the blue? Yeah, yeah, we knew. It was coming, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, but at least when they came. And, uh, Strange time to leave, though, isn't it? Was it four games to go? Yeah, it was, yeah, but it's it's one of those opportunities that you probably don't. It's never going to get, you yeah, know, yeah, to, yeah. to to manage Liverpool. Yeah, he did. Graham's done a, a great forward in the book, and, and is 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 a, is a is a great story in it about going to the to yeah, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, gives you the insight into Graham since as a manager. 
they just expected everything to be done how we, as, as most managers do, there are, most teams are reflections of their personalities, you know, and, you know, you get pulling out of a tackle as a no-no. Did you, ever, did you ever see anyone do that and him react? Uh, no, but I, I'd heard a couple of stories as I, as, I, as I just got to the club about a couple of players. That Can you tell us? Yeah. Not really. I yeah. like to keep that one a bit private. Right. But you only get away with it once and then you never play again. That's it's, it's as simple as that. Scary, that's, how, yeah. that's how the standards are. But yeah. That's how they should be. Yeah. Tell me if yeah. you did say that. He says, if he was soon as me, ruthless. Like, if you, oh, yeah. if you had yeah. never done what he asked, you were, you were ruthless. We don't. No matter how you yeah. are. And, and somebody else would come, come in. in. Yeah. I think yeah. that's though, it's best at clubs at Rangers. I think you need to be like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. So All the top clubs are yeah. like that. You've got to have an edge. Mm -hmm. at, at top clubs. So when he leaves, did everybody almost know it should be Walter Smith to take over? Yeah, I think, that yeah but the, days, David, David Murray was re really smart with it because David came and asked the se senior pros, you know, and I said, well, you've, you've got a built-in manager right here, you know, he's probably not that name that you, Graham Souness is, but he knows all the players, he knows, he knows the club inside out, and he's, he is a great guy. You know, and, and, and David just went, right then, but see on that, what, got the job. What was it about Walter Smith that the older players taught that? What was he good on the training ground? Could you... He was just a great, great human being, a great man, you know, great listener, very good listener, um, and very, very smart. You know, he just he put all, all the responsibility onto the players. He'd give all the responsibility to, to players. Yeah, and then, right, well, you, you decided we wanted to play this way. It's your fault, fix it, basically. And, and that's and that's that's how it was. So there was re once you've got that, as I say, respect both ways. And I've had that a lot with with a lot of managers through through the, the diff my career. You have a winning formula. Is there any uh, one with Walter Smith that stands out? Any said to you, or a wee moment in the changing room, or anything like that? You yeah, can... St Mirren one afternoon, uh, we're losing one 0 at half time, and he got the kit kit, you know, the the skip in the yeah. middle of the dressing room, tight at St Mirren. <laughs> And we're all sat there and we're losing one nil and we're you know, arguing sort of stuff and you know and, and I, I had not seen this before because if we were not playing well and losing, Walter wouldn't come in the dressing room. We'd wait you know five or ten minutes till the players had sorted it all out, then come in. And he'd come roaring in uh, this day and he he, he obviously the, the, the skips there right and it's got the lid on it and he thinks it's empty. He comes in and he has a flying kick at, and a kick at this and it's full. <laughs> right. You, you can actually see his knee go. Oh, oh no. So did he show any sign of it hurting? He just went. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he just, he, he just said, come on. He said, he said, you've got us in this, get us out of this. And we ended up winning 3-1. And that, that was the, the only time I've seen him come in and boot something around. Because that must yeah. have been tough for a manager to come in before games time, to go though, try and win the league. Because he learned from it. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he's won the league on the last day. I don't think it, I can't remember if it was that season. Yeah, but that was that was his that was his fifth game. So probably if we'd have lost that day, if we'd have lost that day and lost that league, he'd probably have gone. Wouldn't have been the Rangers manager. Probably. Do you remember that last day? Is there any, any yeah, yeah. recollection of it? Yeah, yeah. So who was playing? Uh, we played Aberdeen, I think, and Alex McLeish made me look like Pelly uh, that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how, this, how does the celebration compare when Ali Rangers to uh, Monaco? It went on for a while. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say it went on for, I'm going to say, oh, a good 10 days. Da -da. Yeah, 10 really, days on the drink? Yeah, off. On, it's off, a dream on, of off, on, off, on, off. And then I just got away on holiday. Who was who would be like the main guys in that dressing room in terms of banter, laughs? Is it oh, so, no, there's loads of them. I, I got changed. The, 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 the dressing room at Ibrox is like that. It's like that. You come through into the dressing room. I used to change at number ten because it's all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I was ten. Um, McCoy was nine. Durant was eleven. Um, so I sat either side of there. Ian Ferguson sat there. Did they too terrorise you, Gerard and McCoy? It was, it, was a, it was a lively Monday morning, I tell you. A few wow. stories. Oh, yes. Do you know what's sorry to keep it See what was my friend Graham Soon's, but they're very similar. Eh, uh, similar? Um, I think, well, you, know, you can't say similar, um, because I think Graham's personality and Walter's personality were different. Mm -hmm. um, I think they obviously go, both got the same sort of respect. But as a, as, a, as, as, as Graham's character 
uh, and his, um, I'm going to say, his career, you probably got a different sort of approach or look at sort of stuff as, yeah. as, a, as a player looking at, at, at them. But for Walter, Walter was um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, because he knew he was dealing with some crackpots. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But could deal with crackpots, yeah. you know, in his own inevitable way. Yeah. 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 It's mad that he had because it was guys that was obviously so... Oh, yes. So fond of it, you know, yes. There's a story in the book about that. So what, would Paul, you, would you... Paul lived with me for two weeks when he signed. Oh. But he, yeah, I'm not what was that about. like? Well, you can read about it. Oh, was, it was it wild though? Hey? So, was it wild? But what would Walter Smith, would he allow him to be crackpots? Because you think Walter Smith, right, anyone acting up, he'd stamp them out straight away, but was there a side to him where he would like them being they sort he of gave characters? Them, he gave them responsibility. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. Whereas some managers might go in and try yeah, yeah, to stop, to stop, that stop, stop, stop it straight away, yeah. and then that, that just doesn't you just work. Lose yeah, you lose it. So you have to give them that responsibility and respect, and they give it back to you. Yeah, yeah that's that's the secret. Well, right, you mentioned the McCoy lethal partnership. Yeah. How did you go for George Wethel to Alan McCoy? Let's bring back him then. Yeah, I'm glad. Listen, he's got to say I always say this. Alan was the perfect partner for me. Probably technically not. In, you know, with Paolo Rossi or George Ware or Ramon Diaz or Gary Lineker or oh, all that sort just of Just top the balls, weren't yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Right, but mm. as, a, as a finisher, unbelievable. Is he? Unbelievable goal scorer. Yeah, and so he was an unbelievable goal scorer. Um, and a very smart, intelligent guy as well. Because he's linked up? Yeah, he's, well, he linked with me. And so all, uh. all, all the goal scorer does is he looks at, you, uh, looks at the leader of the line and makes sure he's... He's off him. Yeah. In the right and he's, well, 15 yards away. That's, that's, that's the, the intelligence, and that's how it worked. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it was a great, 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 great partnership. Um, I'm going to say, as I say, was, we're all great friends um, and great, great buddies still, as, as you would expect from that, that period. There was a nucleus of players and that nine in a row team, yeah. you know, of 15 players that went the whole distance, all the stuff. Wow. Would, would that be, would it be like every weekend the boys would socialise together? Uh, no, because we used to go and, uh, we do, used to go do uh, supporters clubs uh, back in the day. You know, three of us would go to this supporters club, the three of us would go to that supporters club, and then, you know, we'd have that relationship with the supporters. So would you end up staying and having a few drinks with yeah, supporters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See did you like that? Yeah, I loved it. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, with that same, we were seeing. We well, have an understanding with supporters, and you know, and then you get to realise how much, how important it, it is. Yeah. yeah, and you have that relationship with the supporters. Yeah. It's not just people coming up an audience, right? It's just not. It's not that. You you actually know people, and you know how much it means to them, mm. and that's 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 having that connection. Yeah. See, so, see, so on that with the, with the, with the supporters and. How close you were as a group, like pals and all that. Do you think that's not that's about the game now? Do you think that's what made you so good? What oh, is yeah. that? Yeah, well, uh, Richard came out with that. The immortal saying, you know, the team that wins together drinks together. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, you can say that it went a long way into into galvanising a group of players. But you had to you had to embrace that. But you also had to. Um, um, observe certain regulations within that. Yeah, we couldn't be doing it all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when it was time to knuckle down, it was time to knuckle down. <clears throat> and when it was time for a, uh, you know, to, for a party, we had one. So obviously you played the massive clubs in Milan, Monaco. Was it even with the two clubs? Is the expect expectancy at Rangers higher than your Milan's and your Monaco's? Um, or is it similar pressure? Rangers was 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 high, uh, demanding, um, f- you know, fanatical supporters. Um, and it's, it's like Portsmouth. You miss Portsmouth out there. Yeah. Portsmouth are fanatical supporters. Yeah, that's true. Did that stand you in good stead then? Yeah, yeah. To go and play yeah, for yeah, Rangers, yeah, yeah. 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 Had you seen uh, big just, names come in that couldn't handle that expectation? You know, I've seen many a players that have that came to Rangers and, and, and failed miserably. But you have to have you have to have that understanding of why you're there and what it's all about for the people that are in and around the club. Mm. And that's 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 the that's the main thing. See, with that when you said the Milan derby, like you came out the tunnel and it was 
when you never felt it like that. Mm-hmm. See the old firm was mm-hmm. that similar? Similar. That? Yeah, similar. Yeah, similar. Can you hear, can you hear it? We all say this. Can you hear? No, I, it, listen. I, I I I was real. Uh, I was always focused before a game. I, I didn't look at the team sheet. I didn't look who. I didn't want to know who I was playing against because in my mind, fifteen the first fifteen minutes of every game was set in my mind what I was going to do. Where I was going to probe on what I'll, you know what my achievement would be in the first fifteen minutes, and it was like that from being so a seventeen year old. Yeah, yeah. So I could hear, I could hear my ten, ten other, ten other, ten other voices on the pitch. So I could play within, you know, in front of a thousand people or a hundred thousand people. It made no different for me. You're still going to get the same effort. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, it's different for the the. the, the, the the atmosphere though for a Milan derby, is, is it really similar or is it more? Because I always feel Scott, the Scottish one is angry, isn't it? It's angry, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah there's more discipline in the Italian game. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it is. There's more discipline and more technical in the, in the Scottish game. The Scottish game is, like, especially an old firm game, back in the day, I'm going to say back in the day because it's not so much now, um, was very frantic. How was the uh, like uh, John Brown and Ian Ferguson before I said like Rangers here? Well, F- Fergie said to me, that's, Fergie said to me, you'll not remember the first two, and he was dead right. You, you don't remember your first old firm games because they go like that. You know, it's start and finish, and whoa, what happened there? So you, have, you look at you know the, a recording or something on the old on the old cassette back in the day. Uh, and David did a lot of shouting before the games, Ferguson and yeah, J- Bomber. Yeah, Bomber was a brown bag boy, you know. <laughs> Hyperventilating and all that sort of What's kit it? on at nine o'clock in the morning, and you know, but that's just different, different things, different needs of different players. Did Ian Ferguson quite... ever I have to tell you about the demands? Because I think Arthur Newman, when I interviewed him, came in after a Celtic like, and Rangers game, and Newman was like, him, I don't care how many fucking World Cups you've played, and you're at Rangers now. Does he? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get that for Ian Ferguson, even though you'd played it in really. clubs like Martin? No, didn't I, didn't, do I that, didn't, didn't get that from anybody, really. No, because you were People, always on it. Yeah, I was, that's, and that was me. You know, wow. so you know, you, 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 they're not idiots. You know, you could Ian Ferguson be a scary guy? So, I think we could all be scary guys. You know, yeah. uh, you know, we a lot of punch ups in training and all that sort oh, of stuff. Yeah, a lot of punch ups in the dressing room. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. And with Walter and Sunes, would they encourage it? Well, they weren't there, and so they would come in and be all sorted out. Because well, you said that yeah, they left yeah, it for five yeah, minutes, yeah, not you sorted yeah, it amongst yeah, yourselves. Yep. Yeah. Uh, obviously, in the three famous year, uh, a treble and one game of the Champions League final. Were the best team in Britain at that stage? Yes, we were. Um, and were the champions of, 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 of the UK back then. We, we beat a fantastic Leeds United side. And I thought we did it with a lot of style as well. Um, you know, it was, we was always under the cosh from, <coughs> from the journalists um, uh, of the time, Brit- the English journalists especially. So you know that was a it was a great um, that was a great energy for us the the, the 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 press back then it really did focus and motivate us and, and, and got us going into that and it was a, a competition that as soon as we beat Leeds and they, and they and the, uh, the it was the, obviously the inaugural Champions League um, group stages as soon as that our group came out I thought we could go you know and go all the way um, see was that the Champions League Marseille one yes yeah. yep With, was something, were they doing something or? Yeah, yeah, they, they, well. Was they, it you know you was approached? Yes, I was approached um, and Europe and they, they went for obviously a, a cheaper option and got a couple of uh, referees, um, you know, and that's, that's, that's a disappointment of, of the game of football, you know. And Tappy, uh, I think, did, what did he do, four and a half years in prison. Um, wow, man. So yeah. Was it they came and t- told you not to play in the game? I had a phone, I had a phone call, you can read all about that one. Wow, oh, yes. unbelievable. Uh, just in the last few years at Rangers, another massive name comes in, Big Dunk. Big Dunk, what a legend. Dunk, yeah, I think uh, Duncan was a real good player, um, but I think he probably came, I'm going to say, probably a couple of years too early. Uh, I knew Duncan was coming. What would want me to you know, take him take him in, yeah, and, yeah, under the wing and, and, and teach him the ropes sort of stuff. But Duncan being Duncan, he, he, he was one of these players, young, you know, you know, boisterous uh, uh, young lads that wanted to play all the time, um, and it was you know it was a, a period I think in, in in Duncan's career where he'd come from you know the big fish in a small pond, 
um, into being a, a small fish in, a, in, in the big pond uh, mm -hmm. the, at Rangers. Um, I think he probably found that a little bit difficult. Um, obviously, this, the situation with him, with the police incident and, and all that sort of stuff, the jail. Um, I think he learnt a lot from that yeah. and to have a good career after that. But it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a, uh, a tough time for him when he joined. Yeah. yeah. How was he normally up for listening to all the people's advice? Well, he, as I say, big fish in a small pond. You know, he, he comes from Dundee United, uh, yeah. where he yeah. is that. You know that. You know that. Main man. The main man, and he comes into a dressing room where he's nowhere near being the main man. You know, um, yeah. so it's 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 a hard. It's if you're not if you don't want to take it on and, and, and listen to what people are saying. It's, it's, it's hard for young players to come into that environment where you've got all that talent with experience as well. So you end up going to QPR, why was that? I just had an operation on my ankle and my knee at the same time. And it was a process of, um, I was what, 35? I'm gonna say 35 at that particular period of my, of my career. Um, I always remember, my dad never make a decision when you're, you're injured or in ill health or anything, because invariably it's the wrong decision. It's an emotional, yeah. um, it's an emotional decision. And I made that, that thing to say, yeah, yeah. But to be fair, I think David Murray was looking at it. Walter was looking at it as well. Probably, you know, um, injuries were getting, making me a little bit tired. I don't know. I was still playing pretty well. You know, I think the offer of an, another a million and a half quid from for a 35-year-old was was good business. I think for for the club, and that's 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 where it led me. But as soon as I got to QPR, I knew literally after 10 days it was the mm -hmm. wrong move, the wrong move for me. But hey, we was all there. thought of nine in a row that made you want to. Yeah, I came back. Well, that's 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 the only reason I came back. You know, it, you know, it was, it was one of those. It was one of those phone calls where my agent phones me and I'm, I thought it's somebody taking a mickey. So I put the phone down on them three or four times and, you know, and my, my, my wife at the time then, she picked it up and said, no, it's, 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 it's Dennis. But he said, I've just spoke to Walter. He said, need, need you to go back, sign you till the end of the season. Took me a nanosecond to say yes. So I put all my, all that, all that what I'd done and achieved before and into to, to literally to be judged on one game. If, I'd have, if we'd have lost that game, I'd have been known as the guy that went back and we lost the game. Yeah. So it was one of those decisions. I never even had to make the decision. I knew the players. I knew what it meant to the club and, and what it meant to everybody. Amazing to play your part then in that story. Yeah, with 100%, yeah. yeah. And I always say when I, when I joined Rangers, I wanted to finish my top playing career uh, at, at Rangers. Um, it, you know, that was more or less where it did finish for me. Yeah. But you went somewhere similar to Monaco at the end of Ross County. Ross County, it was a great time. <laughs> I really did enjoy myself up there um, for two games. It was, a, it was a logistic nightmare for me because I was staying, I was staying down in, in, in Derby, sort of going through a divorce and all that sort of stuff. So I, I was having to fly from East Midlands into Glasgow and then get a, I got 20 minutes to get a connection to get up to, to uh, up, 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 up there sort of stuff. And yeah. I could never make it. So. It became a very short stay, um, and, and I never, I never got to play at uh, uh, up there. It was all two away games and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it was, it was, it was an experience, and there were great people up there as well. Yeah, and I still you know, with uh, Roy McGregor up there, the the owner, chairman. Um, it was a good, good, good working relationship with him. What looking man. back on it, so how do you look back on the whole career? What a career! Um, Happy, but. Happy, yeah, I'll always be happy. Never, no regrets. Yeah, it? No regrets. Playing with too many injuries would be the only regret I think I have now. Some mornings I sort of roll out of bed and it takes me about three days to get going. He'll come and help you. I'll help you. Uh, yeah, 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 I tell you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I think that's it. that's the that was the 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 game of the day, physical game, and and, and the, the, the 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 outcome and the fallback on that is that you, you do carry them injuries into later life. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Just quite like, did your dad ever say to you, like, well done, proud of you? Did you ever yeah. get that film? Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, somewhere in a, yeah. in a, bunk yeah, a drunken conversation. Yeah. 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 Now, so what a man. Table. Mark Haley. What a guy. Can we FaceTime Maldini now? Yeah, you can do. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I'll get him up for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark Haley's book, what's it called, Mark? Yeah, Hitting the Mark. Hitting the Mark. Oh, yeah. I like that. November 25th. Make sure you, Make sure you it. get it. Make sure you get it. Just in time for Christmas. Ah, Perfect. Brilliant, mate. Good boys. Yeah.